so nice to have you here. Thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to interview you at this festival. Let me start with the first question. What inspired you with your personal participation in this festival and what are your aspirations um, and intended contribution by taking part of this? I was very much honored to be invited by Gurudev, uh, the Sunni Sri Rabbi Shankar. I have known him only by Dewars. By Guru. Yes. And then that, uh, he is a very important uh, spiritual leader. Right. One of the uh, three primary responsibilities and target of the United Nations is to promote peace and harmony among people. This really helps mm -hmm. to promote team, you know, uh, peace and harmony among many different, many different kinds of uh, cultures and different uh, people, ethnicities from all around the world. I was uh, deeply inspired yesterday, uh, having seen all different kinds of uh, cultures and people are talking in one language. Right. Even so, practically we speak uh, English, French, Spanish, etc., etc. Uh, but I think we were just one. We became one, one. So this is enhancing the unity of uh, people among the people of the world. Of the world, and that's really important. And because we know that you were at the UN, but since you're the puncher from the the position of the UN secretary, how do you assess, uh, Mr. Van Kimmel, the uh, the state of war and peace that we're talking about? How do you assess it? While, uh, even while I was working as a Secretary General, the world was not uh, peaceful as we have expected. Right. But after my retirement, I am deeply concerned the way we are now facing, that we are living in an unprecedented, uh, complex and divided world at this time. Uh, let us uh, look at, first of all, um, the illegal aggression of Russia uh, of uh, Ukraine. <laughs> then let us look at the um, global visual conflict between the United States and China. This really creates um, and affects a lot of uh, areas, not to mention political and diplomatic areas, but the economics and the when. Ukraine was uh, attacked, then there was a serious problem for African people of um, shortage of food. Uh, while uh, the United Nations Secretary General uh, or Turkish President, they really tried to uh, promote certain uh, mechanisms through a Black Sea Grain Deal, but that was not enough. Then more than 7 million people became refugees. Uh, those Ukrainians, internally or externally. It's not only uh, Ukrainian people who, have suffer who are suffering now. Energy prices have gone up, so at any cost, we have to uh, prevent this kind of uh, aggression. Uh, we have to resolve this one in a peaceful way. And I myself visited at the invitation of President Zelensky, uh, who was the last year. Right. Uh, there, I have seen with my own eyes what had happened. It was an unacceptably, you know, world poor. It was a terrible situation there. I could never, never, you know, understand, and I could never allow this kind of things. There, I strongly criticized the President uh, Putin and that the international community should really take for, um, accountability on Russian leader Putin. If uh, international criminal court uh, would not be able to take any action, uh, I suggested that uh, a special criminal court uh, should be established. In any way, I'm sure that the justice will prevail. Justice will have to prevail. Have to prevail at this point. If not today, at tomorrow. If not tomorrow, 
surely in the near future. Yeah. Yeah. This is what my strong belief, uh, based on my experience as a Secretary General of the okay. Nations. Mr. Van Kimmel, when addressing the impact, right, of climate change, who do you think uh, should, or who do you believe, I think, should bear the responsibility of uh, its consequences today in your there may be two rural areas who should be responsible. Right. Uh, first of all, as industrialized countries as a whole, in the name of industrialization during the last 200 years, all this rapid industrialization produced, uh, of course, uh, helped right. world's people to live to be able to live in a more prosperous and wealthier society. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we didn't realize that they were producing enormous amount of uh, greenhouse gas emissions, uh, which really affected uh, totally our climate uh, conditions at this time. The second, I think uh, political leaders, they should be responsible for this. Uh, why? It's unfair if we ask developing countries to take charge of all this, uh, what is now happening uh, because of the climate issues. But it is mostly by, caused by the industrialized countries. Therefore, they should uh, really help developing countries to adapt to this uh, changing situation. That's why I, when I was working as a Secretary General, I have been working very closely with the uh, United States, the Chinese, and European Union leaders. When it comes to some uh, support, there was a very important and strong commitment in 2009. That was in November 2009 during COP15, Conference of Parties 15 in Copenhagen, uh, Denmark. The leaders of the uh, United States European Union, right. Japan, they promised publicly that they would provide $100 billion right. annually right. for developing countries. So that and they created Global uh, Green Climate Fund. Right. Green Climate Fund, whose headquarters is now located in the fabric of Korea. And nothing happened. Nothing happened. The Green Climate Fund is almost an empty shell without any, any money. Right. Of course, there was some money, but less than $100 billion. So there's still more work. After 14 years now. Right, right. Therefore, I'm urging the world leaders, particularly uh, industrialized countries, United States, Japan, European Union, they must provide the necessary financial, technological support for Developable country. Otherwise, exactly. it's not only industrial in country. If for we die, yeah. I think oh, the whole world is going to everybody, change. everyone will die together. That's right. Then What's whether we, you no, know, yes, morally and politically wrong. If we sink together, we have to rise together. Like that. Yeah. This is my strong message to uh, the uh, the really strong the country. Thank you so much for the time. That, that's that's it. We really appreciate it. Okay. You've done a great job and you continue to do great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So much. I